Metal Slug! Anyhow, mm, let's do the modular stuff, shall we? Warhammer Age of Sigmar. What are modular rules, and what do they mean for you? The new edition of Warhammer Age of Sigmar has been revealed with a totally fresh look to the core rules, featuring refinements and tweaks that make the world's greatest fantasy miniatures game even better. We've mentioned modular rules as one of these new changes, but what exactly does this mean? Switch hats? Sure. I'll do it. I will do it. Tying codex to new models is also lame. Yes, it is. I understand why they do it. They help each other sell. It's a, it's a good marketing trick, but it sucks. Um, put simply, the game is divided into core rules and advanced rules. The core rules are quick to learn and cover moving, fighting, shooting, unit coherency, and everything else you need to know how to play a simple battle from start to finish with objectives and terrain. Okay. The advanced rules cover commands, terrain, magic, army composition, command models, and battle tactics. Um, very sad to see battle tactics still um, poisoning this game with its not fun bullshit, but I heard they're getting, battle tactics are getting changed a lot, getting iterated upon. Hopefully, way less important, way less annoying, and it hopefully not per army, at least. Uh, but yeah, sad to see these are returning. Um, as an experienced player will tell you, these are all vital for in-depth tactical games of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So what makes them modular? I'm an experienced player. This shit sucks. <laughs> this is this is dumb. Don't like it. Um, anyway, core rules. Moving, fighting, shooting, unit currency, and object types. And then connected with one, one simple chain. The core rules is being dragged down by six other things. Okay, and we got them color-coded. I'm good with colors. Hopefully battle tactics will be more... Supposedly, somebody said they were going to be a lot more like 40k stratagems, where you have cards and stuff. But I didn't know how they do it in 40k, so I didn't understand what they were talking about. Um, yeah, there's supposedly there's cards and stuff. Yeah, good use of color. Good use of meme. It's so weird that magic is one of these. I can't get over that. Man, that's weird. Oh, okay. I was like, up here they say, a simple battle from start to finish with objectives and terrain. And I'm like, but I thought terrain was advanced, because it's right here. But it's not actually written up here, so I think this is just a, a little copy mistake. Army composition is a module. So we have true open play up here. Just play whatever you want. Put anything you want in there. Don't worry about battle line. Maybe not even worry about number of points you're using. Just, you know, this version really is the open play of... in another name, I guess. Obviously, this is just how they're presented. And everybody is just going to use all of them, right? So... Core is just spearhead, maybe... Yeah, core rules is the new open play, perhaps. Uh, rules have been structured in a modular manner, says Ben, the product developer for the game. This means that you can learn and play games with the core rules. And then, when you need them, you can go on to learn the advanced rules. This is kind of how it already worked, basically. Um... You can even just leave them out completely if you want, though some battle packs, uh, battle packs will require them. It's all part of making the game that existing players love more accessible to new players. Yes, this is, this is it. That's what I was talking about before, when I'm like, this isn't really for current players. This is a way to let new players know that the way to learn the game is easier. 
but really everybody's just going to play with all these so that's the game mm. I don't think so the follow red moo it's kind of a throwback the old Warhammer fantasy books were split into core and advanced like psychology where you had things like stupidity rule were in the advanced section okay I see a hierarchy tree this is how it differs from 40k virtually all the army rules in advanced play in AOS were just outright removed from 40k AOS keeps the option okay well it doesn't keep the option I think it maybe that's how they see it uh, I guess maybe I don't even think they see it like that it's just like if you highlight all this control a you know that's that's age of sigmar but if you're thinking about learning AOS and starting the game Look, you only have to learn this one, and then you can add these if you want to. It's no big deal, right? I think it's an uh, it's kind of a optics sort of thing, maybe. Um, modularity is born from the idea that Warhammer Age of Sigmar is much more than just a game. What? If you use Matt, the man in charge of the rules. Oh, Matt Rose. He's speaking in riddles and rhymes. What did he mean by this? It's a lifestyle. <laughs> Big modularity. It's essentially a platform that supports many types of games. People play Warhammer Age of Sigmar as a narrative experience, a competitive tournament game at sizes and ranging from huge mega battles with hundreds of miniatures to smaller format games like Spearhead and everything in between. I mean, basically true. It's an, it's an entire obey. The buzzwords. With modular rules, you only need to read the rules necessary to play the type of game you want. To play Spearhead, all you need is to read the core rules, and no advanced rules at all. Yeah, there it is. We knew that. Spearhead is their push to get you into the game, and so it would have to, for sure, only use the core rules and not advanced stuff. Yep. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, with modular rules, you only need to read the rules necessary to play the type of game you want. Look, with Dungeons & Dragons, you only need to read Dungeons & Dragons books to play Dungeons & Dragons. You don't need to read EverQuest, the tabletop role-playing game, released in 2004 or something. You don't need to read that. You only need to read what you need to read to play. Same thing. Spearhead. Damn, Path to Ignore. You look at that shit. Advanced. Matched play. Everything. General's Handbook. Everything. We've already... We've already... Limit Breaker. We've already broke the limit of all six of them. We haven't even seen this yet, and they've already smashed the limiter and put a seventh one on there. They can't help themselves. Maybe half of the graphic have, like, seven little things. Here's the weird part to me, and this is a nitpick, and I'm telling you that it is up front, but... This is your image. This is your we are selling this to you image, right? Look at how modular this game is. Look at the four ways people play this game. When really the bottom two are the kind of the same. Um open play spearhead, right? You're you're a six year old child. It's your first game of Age of Sigmar ever, but you're an adult, you know, spearhead, right? And then Path to Glory. Fucking five of them. Right, we go from zero to five. And then the bottom two are just all six. I'm actually not seeing a representation of why having six different modular pieces is necessary here. You know what I mean? If you were gonna show the four most likely ways to play this game, wouldn't you think that they would run the gamut Spearhead slash store demo. Core rules. Some other fucking title up here for a way that is popular to play. Maybe one and two, right? And then 
the next real popular way to play one, two, three, four, right? And then matched play all six and general's handbook all six. Now, I haven't read the whole thing, so maybe they're going to explain themselves, but th this image is just goofy to me. It's like, look at how modular this game was. So anyway, your first game ever features the core rules and then the way everybody plays is just all six. Okay. Plus an additional thing. But, you know, this is just a, I don't think this is a really, it's more of a comment. It's not a complaint. Why are commands and command mods separate? Don't know. They'll probably explain it. Yeah, also, um, Path to Glory is, is definitely plus. It's got extra. It's not just these five. It's, Path to Glory has more custom rules than the General's Handbook does. It should have a plus seasonal rule thing underneath here as well. It should say, like, a Grow League, million extra options, level up your guys, give them experience. You know, there's, there's a lot more to it. Um, by all rights, it should have a little bottom note here as well, I, I think. Anyway, it's fine. The system means that everyone, everything outside the core rules is designed to be plug and play. Although in reality, it's just everything, um, which has serious implications for the future of the game. Those familiar with the general's handbook will know that each season has focused on a unique spian from the predators and prey of Gur, which Centred, which centred monsters and those hunting them. More so those hunting them, but it's fine. To the devastating primal magic channeled by Andatorian locusts in the current season. The new modular structure provides a clean and clear way of implementing such things in the future. Uh, sorry, in future. Okay. In what way? Maybe that way is, um, okay, this season, you we're getting additional stuff in the red zone commands, right? And so it's a color-coded thing like, hey, this general's handbook, it's got new red zone rules, but all the purple zone rules, the blue zone rules, those are the same. So. I don't know if that's like easy. I haven't seen what they're talking about, so I guess we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's easier. I didn't find applying General's Handbook's rules like terrifically complicated, but I mean, that's fine. Okay. Ahem. Switch hats, Oslo? Sure. Get in there. Um, the current General's Handbook is set in Andator and focused on magic, and everyone hated it. It's one of my favorite seasons, said no one. <laughs> Ex sorry, says Matt. One of Matt's favorite seasons. But it was also the season, I think, that has seen the most complaints. Uh, I'm not... This isn't a personal opinion. Like, I'm not saying whether the season was good or not, it's just the one I've seen the most complaints about. And the one that I've seen the most people like just kind of done with third edition for a little while during it. But maybe I'm just being exposed to that a lot. But in practice, it ends up being a little bit awkward for newer players because the rules are split between primal magic rules at the beginning of the book and the standard magic rules they interact with deep in the core rules at the back of the book. Oh, I see. Okay. So, how will modularity impact this? In the future, we could simply replace the magic module entirely with a magic of Enditor module, as an example. Yeah, okay, so this is... As you're reading it, it's... Yeah, I see. I see. I see. 
just an, it's an on-ramp EC. Makes sense. This could seamlessly integrate thematic modifications to the magic rules for the battle pack without resorting to extensive core rules errata or layers of extra rules on top. Yeah, even though they are extra rules on top, they just are. But you're putting it in there. That also means that a downside to this is established players will see a new color-coded magic section and start reading stuff they're familiar with from the core magic section and start skimming through it and miss the stuff that changed. I guess you could highlight the stuff that changed or something, but that's a, that's a danger. There are also other benefits, as Matt explains, say, for example. We find out during the course of a season of matched play that the economy of command points isn't quite right for competitive play. Yeah. We don't need an issue in Errata Online. Instead, we could have a new General's Handbook with a new command module that is both thematically resonant and helps evolve the internal balance. If we want to bring that advanced rule module back in the future, we can. Yeah, okay. So... If you don't get enough command points, they don't have to change the core rules, they just have to change the module. Which again, they could have done before, but it's about presentation. The potential for this system is huge, and it helps clearly delineate certain aspects of the rules for both beginners and experienced players creating clear steps to follow when teaching the game. You just lost. The team has plenty of ideas on how this might shake things up in the future, and you'll see from the start of the new edition how it works in practice. Tomorrow, we'll be back with a look at one of the most exciting and unique aspects of uh, the tactical twist, known as the priority roll. Um, and that's what I'm reading today, right? Oh, there's also Warhammer Team Reflects on Adepticon, which I might I might read. I might read that one. Salamander, it feels like a lifetime since Watertight. Yeah. I mean, let's see. Can we defend them a little bit? Third edition was more Watertight than the previous editions. It featured numbered rules. That was big, you know, using keywords, rules bold. I mean, Watertight, obviously not, but an improvement. I can't remember who said watertight, but I feel like they were purposefully making life difficult for some intern online or something. This feels like it would be more confusing for a new player. They spend all the time learning X rules just to be told it's being replaced. I don't know. Once you have learned X rules, you're no longer a new player. You're fine. The transition from one thing to another thing is, I don't think, a problem. Because at that point, you're no longer a new player. And the game isn't, like, terrifically difficult to figure out. Yeah, it was a statement doomed to failure. They, they set it up for that, right? Three feels like one of the best additions of any Warhammer game they've ever put out, and it's an edition of AOS you may come back to eventually. Cool, Bishop. I... How, what percent do I agree with you? 65, probably? 68.5% agree with you. I'll, I'll give her that. What is the priority role? Damn, I made a video about this. You could watch it if you gave a shit. Um... We're discussing how the modular rules of the upcoming, uh, upcoming edition of Warhammer Age of Sigmar allow for easier learning and more customization as the game expands. But this is far from the only positive change in the new system. Good, because I don't give a fuck about modular and it doesn't matter at all. To me, like the established player guy, uh, no one cares. That's for new players. I want to know what you're doing with the rules of the actual game because we're going to use probably all of them no offense um 
it sounds good for new players, but for me, I'm excited about everything else. Today it's time to tackle one of the signature aspects of Warhammer Age of Sigmar, the priority role. The thing 10 million people would play Age of Sigmar if only the priority role went away, if you read online comments. Um, a lot of the people that don't want to give Age of Sigmar a chance because there's priority, a meaningful percentage of those people are people that I'm happy to gatekeep out of the game. Anyway. But that's neither here nor there. And maybe the two aren't intrinsically linked. The player who finishes setting up their army first gets to choose who takes the first turn. Yep. True. This feeds into a strategic element of list building. It does. Another part of the game which has undergone changes for the new edition because it may affect the composition of your army asterisk. Okay. That's true. You already start playing around priority, a central pillar of the whole game, before you even start playing the game. When you're designing your list, at the start of every battle round after the first, players make a priority roll and the winner decides who takes the first turn, if it's a tie. Player who took the first turn in the previous battle round decides who goes first in the current battle round. Yeah, they break ties. I'm really good at rolling exactly what my opponent does and thus not getting a double turn. I'm, I'm actually skilled at that. I can't stop doing it. I'm gonna get a lottery ticket so I can break even. Mm. Sometimes this means a canny player can take two turns in a row. Canny? You mean lucky? <laughs> Got him. Often referred to as a double turn, which offers a substantial tactical advantage. In the short term. In the long term, not so much. Um, to put in my own commentary here. Um, in general. In, a, in general, in a vacuum, the rule of thumb is... If taking a double turn would cause you to definitely win the game right now, you'd take it. And if taking the double turn would do any less than that, you give it away. That's like the general consensus. If taking it would cause you to slam the coffin door shut right now, the game's actually just over, take it. Otherwise, give it back and do you do it. You go, I go. Set yourself up for the next battle round to be able to maybe choose that. Um, there's a lot of situations where there, where that's not true, but that's essentially the rule of thumb. Turn priority. First battle round. First player to set up army chooses the turn order. Yep. And then subsequent. Winner. Choose turn order. First player in previous round chooses turn order. Yep. That's, that's what you do in ties. I made a nice little graphic to show this. I made a graphic too for my video where I told people how to play essentially. Those of you who have played other Warhammer tabletop games may find this a little odd initially. N well, it's more than that. Those of you who have played any other game almost uh, may find this a little odd. Um, Because I used to play Magic, and so I'm like, damn, stitch in turns? Interesting. Interesting choice. I like the time walk. I've cast a time walk or two in my day. Mm. Hey, all right. I'll play a game around that. I lost my place. Uh, the decision is rich. The decision is rich with tactical depth and opens up a wide range of options for both forward planning and counterplay. Damn, you got to do them like that. Even the fucking article is saying, get good. Yeesh. The latter of which have been considerably expanded in the upcoming edition, yeah? What's more, it's here to stay in the new edition, but the balance between risk and reward has become much more finely tuned. Yeah, I suppose in a vacuum, doubling if you can exactly win, otherwise always give it away. Maybe that's a little too solved, you know, in general. Um... They've been toying with some stuff to change that up, depending, you know. I'm thinking of those battle plans where 
whoever goes second gets to remove an objective or blow one up or do something you know i've i've been seeing them do more of those uh, over the years now in match play battle plat battle packs when you choose to take a double turn you give up your opportunity to pick a battle tactic for the turn asterisk it's still an incredibly powerful option but the decision is now far from a foregone conclusion i disagree i think it'll become solved as well um but that's fine it, it uh how do i put this even though i said the words i disagree um i think i'm fine with this let's see let's think about this how is this going to play out in reality because right now you never take a double turn unless you're going to instantly win from it how does this change that rule of thumb if you take it, you give up your opportunity to pick a battle tactic for the turn. So it reinforces the current rule of thumb, in other words. So you still only take a double if you're going to essentially table the opponent or just win. And you continue to always give it up if you're not. I don't think this adds any new... Well, okay, it probably does add... I think this just reinforces what you already do, you know? Now, very care I noticed here, when you choose to take a double, so you can't give it up and have your opponent, like, not be able to score. Um, that would be hilarious. Lee bad, right? Yeah, I feel like the foregone conclusion has actually been strengthened by this, but okay. Well, at least I don't have to update my video. The, the advice I give in that is still the same. Good. Cool. Um, Mondo Combo. Hey, thanks for the follow. Ahem. Also, we're assuming battle tactics carry the same weight in scoring right now. They count for, like, 10% of your entire W score. Yeah. And they also count for your tiebreakers in the tournament itself, right? Which is a, arguably a bigger deal than just winning a game. Um, you think it does the opposite? Because if you aren't going to win off the double, you aren't going to give up the potential extra points? Yeah, I think it just reinforces the, uh, the general consensus already in a sense All right and the person who's given a double isn't punished so yeah we're just hey same as it ever was right best news yet no tangible change to priority yeah basically i think the priority role and the potential for a double turn can create really cool and dynamic outcomes where you can't predict the flow of a game explains matt true Lead games developer for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Damn. LDG? Let's go. I mean, LGD. You can't count out each player's moves as simply as a straightforward you go, then I go. Yeah, it would be way easier if it was you go, I go to just... Mm, yep, you can't win. It turns out uh, you just mathematically you lose here, and so we don't need to play the rest, right? With priority, you at least do have to figure out who's going the ne those next two battle rounds or whatever. It's a wonderful possibility space. <laughs> oh, damn. This is... Dude, this is up there with play literacy. Possibility space. Oh, Matt, I'm stealing that one. It's beautiful. Possibility space. I fucking love that. I'm using it. Somebody write that down. Initially, the double turn might seem like an obvious advantage, but it's important to consider that many defensive abilities last until your next turn. That means the player who goes second will often still have their buffs and defensive spells up and running. Yep, he's explaining the just bare bones, you know, basic. Yeah, this is how you play the game. This is this is what Age of Sigmar is. Age of Possibility Space Mar. 
<laughs> the possibility pace. Yeah, this is my insane pace. The primary skill expression in Warhammer Age of Sigmar is making the best tactical choice in the face of uncertainty. This is not chess. You have to react to things you can't be certain of. Yeah, we roll dice all the time in this game. A pawn, if you do the thing, it always captures, right? And in this game, a pawn, you gotta roll dice. You gotta roll them dice is... The double turn is a very powerful expression of this. A powerful possibility space. You have situations in a turn where you just don't know if your opponent will be able to go twice. Maybe they have the positioning to take advantage of the double turn, so you need to position yourself correctly. Ahem. Oh, the possibility space in my lungs. It's My lungs are filling up with possibility space. Oh, help. Dude, my lungs are out of space. All the possibilities. Ugh. Ahem. Pardon me. Anyway, um, maybe they have the positioning to take advantage of the double turns. You need to position yourself correctly in response. But then, what if they don't win the, the priority roll? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're playing around priority uh, a half an hour before it happens. That's the whole point. At the beginning of the battle round, you know who goes going first, you know who's going second. And after that, you know who has the opportunity to maybe go twice. And so you're playing your entire turn knowing what could happen in the future. You can play towards knowing, like, oh, I'm going to win that roll. I'm just going to win the roll, right? And now you're overextended. It's a big risk. You're playing before the hype moment. Um, or... I just know my opponent's going to win that. He's going to go twice. I'm going to play really conservatively, double layer up the chaff lines. I need to be able to weather two turns in case they do. And so I'm going to play KG and scared. You know, I'm going to play conservatively. But that means that maybe if I happen to win priority randomly, I'm not in a position to capitalize on it. And so these are just things you think ahead to play around. That's why the game's kind of hard at a high level. Does it mean that giving an opponent double will lose a battle tactic? No, they thought of that. Um, Matt Rose, 500 IQ game designer, thought of that. It's when you choose to take a double turn. And if you're giving one to your opponent, they're not choosing. You are. So that's that's how you don't screw your opponent out of, you know, just everything, right? Because... <laughs> If giving your opponent a double caused them to lose a battle tactic, the rule of thumb would be always give it away and your opponent loses the game like 99% of the time. You know, taking a double would be the stupidest thing generally, right? So anyway, yeah, um, don't worry. They thought of that. They thought of that one. Um, According to Ben, the product developer on... Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Top level players will spend a lot of time considering when to give the double turn away and when to capitalize on it. Maybe. Uh, a player can pass on the opportunity to take a double turn, knowing that they are they are set up in such a way that it won't really impact them. This gives them the chance to take a double later on and really capitalize on it. That's the mark of a great player. Dude, I do that all the time and lose. But I do that a lot. When new players first learn about the double turn, it often raises a few eyebrows, but it's well-loved by the community at large. This is actually true. It's hugely complained about, but mostly by people who don't play the game. And they list it as one of the main reasons why they don't play the game. So as a company, I'm surprised that they haven't gotten rid of it. Because just the idea of a double turn is probably a barrier to entry for a huge amount of people, I bet. 
So to me, it's shocking that they have really, somebody at Games Workshop is just like, no, I'm making a game with priority and that's final. And they put their foot down and they're right. That's what makes the game interesting. But I'm just surprised that they choose to say no to money. Uh, oh, Games Workshop, only make choices that screw people over and only make choices to make the most money. Not even close. If they got rid of priority, so many more people would try Age of Sigmar, I think. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm off here. Um, but they're they're sticking with it, which is cool. Very interesting. Um, I often ask competitive players, play testers, and influencers the same questions, says Mad. What did they add to the game? What they'd change about it, and what they'd remove from it. By far, the number one answer to the last question is not the double turn. Our players are fiercely loyal to this concept to the point it's become a bit of a rallying call. Well, I wouldn't start saying only the faithful, that was fucking cringe. But yeah, <laughs> make a make priority a module. There you go. We'll soon be able to share more details on other changes that will inform your tactics and strategies from command points and scoring to the new underdog mechanic. Oh, I'm interested. Tell me more. But the headline news is that the priority role is here to stay. Get practice sizing. Your forward planning, damn, get good as the last sentence, eesh. Oh, well, more to say later. Wow. All right. Um, priority is staying. And the, the general consensus about what to choose if you win priority is only reinforced. It's actually even more... You're, we're like doubling down on it. It would almost be silly to take a double turn in anything but the most shutout case now. Um, which was already kind of true, and now it's just really true. So, yep. Interestingly, maybe fewer choices than before. But it's also, maybe it's, look, maybe that's kind of marketing, right? Maybe the problem wasn't that people kept taking doubles all the time. Maybe the problem was that people didn't know that you really shouldn't be, for the most part. And so if more people realize that because they doubled down on it, maybe what they're saying is you, you there listening, who play the way you're supposed to already, you were doing it so right, they changed the rules to let everyone else know that you were doing it right. There, that's the, that's the explanation for it. You can imagine Honest Wargamer flat out told them, give me prior, give me death. Yeah, probably. Um, I don't know that they talked to him though. I don't think they left on great terms. I, he still knows a bunch of people that work there, and he has contacts and everything. I don't know if officially they like the guy. I'm talking about the old guys in charge, but... Underdog, more like destruction army mechanic. Hey, uh, whatever. I think there should be an underdog mechanic in this game. I guess and that's what we can talk about, right? That's what we can talk about. Is um, I think they sh there should be an underdog mechanic, I agree. There should be one in this game. Too many times you get to the top of fourth, and now it's time to just talk about how the game is probably going to end and figure out if you need to roll anything that matters for it. I think that happens too often. Okay. Roll priority for fourth. Battle round. All right. So this is probably going to happen. That's a, Do we... Can we talk it out, or do we need to keep playing? Okay, and then fifth battle round comes around. You definitely don't need to play it. You need to roll priority, maybe roll a charge, and see if this guy can kill that guy in like a in like a combat, and then maybe that's it. I don't know. 
Some people think that priority is an underdog mechanic, but it is not. What underdog mechanic would there even be? This is a weird one. Hold up. My brain is folding inwardly, infinitely, into like a superstructure. How do you even define technically who's currently winning or not? You know what I mean? Just because I have more points than my opponent does not mean I'm, like, winning. By the points, I think, you know, sure, but... I could be up in points right now, but know that I'm definitely going to lose the game and it's not going to be close. How would you write that into the rules? How would you define something that weird, I guess? I don't, I don't know what you would even do. And let's pretend the underdog mechanic is overpowered, right? Just pretend, whatever it is, if you're the underdog in battle round four, you win the game or something, just it's totally overpowered, right? Well, now, how are you supposed to play Age of Sigmar now? Well, you're supposed to win by as small a margin as possible. Every turn, you're supposed to, like, not get ahead even if you could you choose to not ever get ahead purposefully holding yourself back the whole time and then you steal it at the end right i'm gonna be perfectly honest with you that sounds like a miserable way to play that sounds like a real shitty way to have to play the game uh man i just uh really wonder what this could be it could be anything even a boat. They put an underdog mechanic in 40k. It was a joke. What was it? Dice. I, somebody mentioned this last stream, actually. Yeah, you don't want the meta to be sandbagging for most of the whole game. Which it currently kind of is, by the way. That's one of the reasons I don't like battle tactics for um, deciding who... Uh, for a bunch of reasons. One of the reasons I don't like battle tactics. Let's put it that way because they force you to sandbag so that sometimes you leave your opponent's stuff alive even so you can technically complete the fifth one. Just a little bit. But this one would be more, right? Yeah, like Nexus Collapse. Maybe who scored the most BTs? Maybe if you're down by X points in turn, you can pick two battle tactics. Right, but X points would be really weird, wouldn't it? Because each battle plan has a different number of points you can be getting every turn. Some battle plans you can make, you can get like six points a turn, and some you, like turn one, you can't get any, you know. it's. I think the battle plans vary too much. Maybe they wouldn't in the future. Need Marvel's X Factor? I only know about it in Marvel vs. Capcom. But X Factor in that is is the shit. Skaven Virgil. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Gambit's in 40k. I don't think I'm going to win, so I'll choose to put all my eggs in one basket. I mean, that's playing towards the double, right? That's playing towards winning priority, in a sense. Unless it's a power both players have, but it gets better the less points you have. Hmm. Essentially, you give up the ability to score primary mission points for a Hail Mary that could net you a chunk of points. Okay. What's the counterplay? If I'm winning the game, how do I stop my opponent from doing a gambit? Or do they just get to try? You're supposed to... Oh, you just kill them harder? Okay. In 40k, it's basically that you declare you are doing a gambit. You can't do battle tactics and draw a secret battle tactic that are extremely hard. The counter is that they are near impossible. Oh, okay, then that's... Yeah. I remember somebody said something like that Monday. Yeah. Hey. If I'm getting... If I'm getting crushed this game, 
I definitely can't do anything extremely hard. Because if I could do something extremely hard, I probably wouldn't be losing this bad, <laughs> you know? It seems self-defeating in a certain way. I guess they want it to be rare. It's supposed to be a gambit, so it's not supposed to happen all the time. But yeah, it feels like, oh, um, roll for priority. It's the top of turn three. I have one Frost Lord with three life left and two Mornfang. And it's like, gain control of every objective. Well, I can't. I only have two units. Well, then you lose. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, have a unit in each corner of the battlefield on turn five. Right, but the problem is all my guys are dead. <laughs> I don't have four guys. I have one guy. And then by turn five, I have zero guys. I suppose that's the whole point of why people make fun of gambits, though. The problem is... Now the opponent can solely focus on denying your gambit since you can't score primary. Yeah, I suppose so, right? Like if at the bottom of turn three you announce a gambit, and then the opponent's like, oh, so you can't score any more points and I'm technically up in points, so I'm just going to put my whole army in a corner. You can't physically walk into this corner to get all four and so I win? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'm interested in what an underdog mechanic could even be in this game. But I'm even more interested in how we are defining the fact that you're losing. Because that's a nebulous term. Damn. I think I'm scared of underdog mechanic in AOS. I'm scared of this thing. I really don't want to... I really don't want to have to... Like, ooh, don't win too hard, because otherwise your opponent is considered the underdog. That really does not sound like a fun way to play. And a strong underdog mechanic would oblige me to play like that. Underdog mechanic, the triple turn! Oh, pog, 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 yeah. Present they'll half ass it like in 40k. Maybe that's ideal just so it doesn't warp the game. <laughs> okay, I got it. I got the worst one. Um, you get plus one to priority rolls on the die for each for each two victory points you are down versus your opponent. There. I just off the top of my head, I thought of the stupidest worst possible one. It's for every two victory points you're losing by, you get plus one the priority rolls. And so the entire format, like, its limbs contort and like, oh, it's like a horror movie. The whole game gets crunched down to never ever be winning by more than one point ever. Like, you're standing on an objective and you like, d you don't, oh, I don't want to step on this objective because then I'm winning by two. <laughs> Can't do it. Um, I've I've envisioned a future of pain and torture. I really hope it's not anything like that. Yeah, but Dragon 240, that would be the thing. The meta would be you deploy off of all the objectives. You don't want to ever stand on an objective, right? Just never turn one and then your opponent does that too because that's what you're supposed to do and so you each avoid the objectives the entire game and then the whole game is decided by who wins priority on the last turn and then stands on the objectives to technically get the most points that'd be like the ideal way to play in the weird world yeah the average limited resources game mm -hmm. Nexus Collapse <laughs> What a, what a strange journey. Gotta be careful if the comeback mechanic is too strong, people play to lose. This happened early in TW3 multiplayer, yeah. 
Yeah. I'm suddenly concerned about this thing. I've I've spooked myself into being concerned about what this underdog mechanic could be. I really, really don't want to or either play to lose or like Ooh, don't win too hard. You have to win. You have to be winning always by exactly one point. And if you are winning by two points, then the underdog mechanic is going to screw you. So you got to, you got to walk a tightrope instead of just fucking, just fucking win. Just let him win. Anyway. Anyhow. Yeah, I guess you got to play old world now. No, thanks. NTY, no thanks. I don't like, I'm not really interested in rank and flank, to be honest. Don't really like rank and flank that much. Um, not my type of game. 